Well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Michael, and I'm very happy to be back to uh, to uh, Boao, even if uh, virtually this time. Uh, I started uh, participating in this great forum four years ago, and at that time the, the, the panel was moderated by another great anchor from CGTN, my friend and companion in arms, uh, Yang Rui, uh, whom I'm giving a tribute uh, today, Michael, I'm sure you you join me uh, to, to say hi to Young Ray. Uh, no, I agree with a lot of things. Uh, I, I think this year gave a sense of two things, of acceleration and planning. Acceleration in trade, uh, uh, in, in, in fostering new ways of trade, you know. The, the, the current trade uh, has had hiccups, uh, but new ways of trade. So we've discussed about, uh, about the trains, the Eurasian trains. But what is noticeable is the RCEP treaty got accelerated. It is a treaty that got negotiated for a long time. It got, it got clinched uh, towards the end of the year. Planning as well. We all know that the trade of today results from investment of yesterday and uh, the investment of today uh, means the trade of tomorrow. And uh, uh, as a European, I can only salute uh, the fact that there has been an agreement in principle for a EU-China uh, uh, investment agreement, both on services, so IT is concerned, of course, but partly as well on, on industry. And here I would want to comment on what's been said on the uh, Eurasian train or rail uh, rail freight. So far, uh, a lot of uh, trade on this route has happened uh, kind of one way, mostly from Asia to Europe for obvious reasons. I think we have to make this more optimal and we have to help balance the trade. Uh, Europe can export a lot of things. We've been lucky to hear the, 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 the minister from Ukraine, Ukraine, uh, can export a lot of uh, a lot of uh, services. We've known that, but can export a lot of goods. They can export uh, uh, agricultural good, uh, uh, processed uh, food. So can Europe. We can export uh, some uh, types of advanced technologies, uh, equipments. Uh, so I think we ought to work on balancing uh, balancing this trade. I think is is an important uh, issue. Two more points I would want to add in kind of reaction, but again, moving into this direction of planning the future. Uh, I would say that energy structure are changing. We all know that we have energy transition. And here is somewhere where the Belt and Road Initiative can play a role. We've heard uh, mention, uh, mention about hydrogen. Hydrogen has two champions in the world. One is China and the other one is European countries. Uh, or oh, Asia at large, uh, Japan is part of that uh, as well. Uh, I think we ought to have more cooperations in terms of research, in terms of joint endeavors, and in terms of exchange of goods, because the hydrogen chain, the hydrogen value chain is multiple, is complex, and uh, China, the Chinese industry has some advantages in its equipment, so does uh, the German and the French industry. So I think in terms of trade of goods, and these are, again, uh, heavy equipments that can circulate very easily uh, across, uh, across the Eurasian uh, continent. Last but not least, in terms of value chain, um, these new energies, uh, and namely uh, hydrogen, can uh, transform uh, shipping. They can transform uh, more and more uh, shippers are considering having hydrogen uh, vessels, hydrogen fleet, and last but not least, one another point I want uh, I want to uh, to add. Africa was mentioned. Many African countries are part uh, are intrigued with the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, the WTO, for the first time in its history, has an African Director General, a lady, uh, and she is willing to promote uh, trades. Uh, within Africa and between Africa and the rest of the world. And I think that here, Europe on the one hand, uh, China on the other hand, and Asia more generally, have a, a card to play to help uh, the African continent open through, through, through trade. And again, through a balanced trade. Uh, so far, the Belt and Road Initiative on the African continent has contributed a lot in terms of investment. Trade should be more. And my very last point is that the investment that has occurred on the continent, on the African continent, through the Belt and Road Initiative, 
was rather for infrastructure. So no, I'm not saying that uh, Africa is enough equipped with infrastructure. infrastructure. Africa needs more infrastructure, but it has been mentioned in the panel that the next stage is to look for human infrastructure, human capital formation. And I think that here within the Belt and Road Initiative, this people to people pillar is important and should not neglect Africa. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, to share your optimism, uh, I think it's very important that we consider that this agreement has not stopped. Uh, first of all, there will be a ratification process. We know that. We've all known that. Uh, at the time of uh, 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 shaking hands, uh, Germany was there because Germany was chairing the EU, uh, but President Macron from France was there as well. And uh, foreseeably, the time of ratification, of final ratification, will happen under uh, France's uh, presidency of the EU. Again, President Macron. Uh, Mrs. Merkel and Mr. Macron are said to be willing to visit uh, uh, China together in September. So there is a sense of continuity uh, within the EU. Michael, you were mentioning very rightly, very aptly, the negotiations on climate. The EU, unlike the US, does not want to, at the same time, discuss positively on climate and lead to rivalry on all other topics. Uh, the EU does not have this approach, it has a more positive approach. Uh, one very last, so, so really this agreement is not dead and on the long term I'm pretty convinced it will click. Uh, very last and short point, uh, I, I really vouch for what all Jens has said, especially in terms of connectivity. The, the trade of tomorrow is on new schemes, on new energies, on new topics, on new technologies, and they all go through connectivity. Europe as a whole, even beyond the EU, formal EU, has much more connectivity today because it has invested in its own uh, infrastructure than the US has. So the interest for Asia to trade with EU and to balance the, the trade with EU it is very clear uh, according to me and the key issue again is is today to have the right investments today my very 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 last point uh, back to what uh, Liu Hualong said uh, investment is based on trust and also goes through networks and culture uh, the two parts of the Eurasian continent has to get acquainted to each other better, have to know each other better. And uh, once the great treaties are signed, the contents can only be filled by the business. And the businesses have to know each other and culture can play a very great role. Not culture mm -hmm. in the generic terms, but culture in terms of cultural projects, cultural products. Mm.